Hey, this is Jody with Welding Tips and Tricks. It seems like every time I go to do a stick welding video, it's going to be at least 95 degrees in the shop. I just finished up the stick portion, 7018 fill and cap on a 6 inch uh, 6G. It's been a while, been a while, a little rusty, shaking the rust off. No excuses. It is what it is. Um, but I hope something I did here today helps you out, especially if you're getting ready to go take a 6G test and your job depends on it, which most of the time it does. All right, a really quick review here. We're going to go through uh, the old prep. You need to prep on anything that's going to be TIG welded, and there's a TIG root hot pass on this. You need to prep it clean, bright metal, no mill scale at all, within about you know a half inch of where you're going to weld it. So i got that first tack in there now, and it needs uh, three more, about 90 degrees apart. You need to talk to the test supervisor about how long the tack should be. Some of them are real particular on they wanted half inch, no more than a half inch, no more than three quarters, no more than an inch, whatever. And uh, especially on the smaller diameter pipes. And we need to feather the tacks with a grinder. And then uh, really pay a lot of attention to how high you position the, the, uh, the pipe joint. You generally have a choice on how high you put it. But once you decide and once that's it, sometimes they'll actually ask you to tack weld it and stamp it and things like that where you can't rotate it, you can't move it, you can't raise it, you can't lower it. So, you know, if you raise it too high, you, you have a hard time seeing on the top. If you raise it too low, it's you're in a bind on the bottom. So it's important. Now, I'm walk, I'm not walking the cup on the root here. I'm just freehanding, uh, resting my, my finger on a TIG finger you, because I use a scoot and back type motion on a root pass like this. I don't like to do any side to side type motion and that generally pushes it through gives me a little bit of root reinforcement it just works for me hot pass I don't mind walking the cup at all I just don't spend a lot of time across the middle now for the stick pass you see I don't put I don't like to put the rod in there like that like you would normally would weld a lot of structural stuff because when you get on up to the top when you get on up to the top of the pipe joint, your rod's burning, getting shorter. You get in a real bind up there trying to keep a good rod angle. So what works for me is putting the, putting the rod in there kind of, uh, you know, backwards, kind of downward like this, to where as that rod gets shorter, as I twist my wrist, I can keep the same rod angle from bottom to top or from, you know, however long the rod burns from bottom to 90 degrees or whatever. Just turning the wrist as the rod gets shorter keeps a good good rod angle same thing on this side just turn your wrist the other way just keep turning your wrist as you weld and it's easy to keep that rod pointing pretty much straight in which is kind of what you want to do so we'll light up off the bottom here I'm choosing to put one one bead over top of that hot pass and I'm using 1 8 rod here now, if they let you use 332nd, it might be a good idea. There's a trade-off, though. 332nd, you're going to have a lot more tie-ins, or one or two more tie-ins anyway, whereas a 1 8th, you're only going to probably have one tie-in between getting from the bottom to the top. But it's a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more risky as far as blowing through. I have blown through before going to take a test and putting that root pass in and then coming coming back over with a you know 7018 and here goes a hole and you're done so that's that's nothing sucks worse than that to drive a long way and then take a test and blow a hole in your root pass but I've decided to put one pass over top of the root pass here as opposed to two because when you put two passes over top of something that narrow down in the groove like that you really got to stack them in there, Ryder. It's hard to uh, get that second one in there. You can leave yourself a tight crevice, and it's really, uh, you know, you can have a have lack of fusion. You can trap a little slag or whatever, whereas just a slight weave is a lot less likely to trap any slag or anything. It's a preference thing, and also it you might it might be stipulated uh, at the test you're taking. They might want. You might want 332nd, they might want two passes. You just have to ask. I just decided to put one, one, one eighth, 7018 pass over top of that root and hot pass. You see, I have ground uh, the start there because it had a little bit of a high place on it. 
So coming up the other side, it makes for a lot smoother tying if you if you grind uh, the the start on on the uh, on the first pass. If they let you grind, I have taken tests before where after you get the tax feathered, they want the grinder back and they hand you a file and everything's filing from there on out. They don't want it to be a grinding test; they want it to be a welding test, which I totally get because some people get carried away and want to want to grind every single pass slick and that's just not smart not necessary shouldn't ever be necessary if you have high spots little you know after the first pass, first pass is done like this if you have little high spots on the tie in this now's the time to knock them down with a grinder i'm in pretty good shape here to go ahead and run two more passes over that and then i'm going to be in good shape for the cover pass it'll take two passes over that for a good a good fill though Again, I light up ahead of where I want to start, and then weld over all those arc strikes, and I'm just kind of lining up halfway over that first pass. I'm trying to leave the bevel. I'm trying not to come all the way out to the bevel, so I have kind of a, a nice sharp line to put a nice cover pass on. You can see I ground there already where I started to make for a nice tie-in on uh, coming up the other side like this. I use a very slight electrode manipulation, just just a little bit to kind of play the light back and forth. Help me see where I'm going. And on tie-ins, I do the same thing as when I start. I light up a little bit ahead and then come right into the crater. Give that 7018 just a second or so to heat up so I can avoid uh, porosity if possible. I got one pass over top of that first pass and you know now's a good time to knock knock down any little high places on tie-ins and everything if it's if it's permissible now you can see where I've got the rod stuck in there if I just stack that for that beat up a little higher it might put me in a jam where I'd have to take a grinder and kind of wallow that out a little bit but uh, I'm in pretty good shape here to uh, to burn that second pass in there with the 1 8th rod so no grinding necessary now I would generally like to run a little hotter than this I'm only running about 110 amps here and um, the thing about pipe is that you know when you light up on the bottom you're welding overhead which you can stand quite you can stand to weld overhead about the same as you can weld flat about 120 amps or so but very quickly you start into the vertical position and, and 120 amps is a little bit hot to good to vertical and then you'll be crowning up and undercutting and all that stuff so pipe is kind of a trade-off you know you gotta set the amperage at a, at a place where it's hot enough for you know overhead vertical and then you know flat again as you get to the top of the pipe so again I'm running about 110 amps here but I've got the dig set high up to about 77 so I can keep a tight arc and not stick and and uh, keep everything under control so, so far things aren't going too bad got a little bit of that little bit of that second pass left to, to put in there and again I don't want to melt that that straight line of the bevel away if possible if I come right up to it that's fine but I, I want to you know it's kind of like uh, when you're coloring when you're a kid it's kind of nice to have lines and borders to stay in so if you keep those lines straight when you put the cover pass on you got a better shot of making it uniform if they're not all chewed up so I'm not in too bad a shape here what I want to see before I put a cover pass on is I want to be I want to be slightly below flush and that's the bottom right there so I would take a grinder and knock knock any crowns off that I thought were going to give me a problem but I'm not in too bad, not in too bad a shape here to put a cover pass on. And I'm going to go for a three bead cover pass. And what I'm watching for here, this is the first bead. I'm doing a little bit of electrode uh, oscillation, I guess you call it. But I'm just trying to overlap the edge of that bevel by about a sixteenth of an inch. No more than that. I've seen guys, you know, get carried away and go way out wide, a good quarter inch past each side of the bevel, and that's just over welding. More opportunity for things to go wrong. Takes more weld, more bead, more problems. Why ask for trouble? So 
So just overlap that bevel by just just a little bit. I mean, you don't want to just nip it because you can risk not nipping it, but a sixteenth of an inch is is a pretty good rule of thumb on how much to overlap the, the, the edge of the bevel. And if you take the edge of the rod right to right to the edge of the bevel, the puddle will flow out a sixteenth of an inch. Alright, we're going up the other side now. Again, you can see the edge of the rod, the bottom of that 7018 rod is just about aligned with uh, the, the, uh, the bevel when I, when I oscillate it and then I let the puddle kind of fan out whatever it wants to past that which is roughly a sixteenth of an inch. 1.6 millimeters for everybody else in the world. <laughs> So that's what it looks like with that first pass of the cover pass on there. I made it a little bit wide, a little bit heavy, but that was kind of intentional to kind of give me a shelf to uh, to build the rest of the, the uh, passes on. I won't go quite as slow on the on the uh, next two, but that kind of gives me that kind of establishes the height of my cover pass, and then just lets me overlap that first uh, pass by half. And here I'm coming up the other side, same thing overlapping by about a half and then not quite tying into the top of the bevel and we're speeding things up here now because I'm trying to keep the video a reasonable length here's the last speed the last speed I'm really eyeballing the top of that bead because I don't want to I don't want to leave any undercut at all if, if, if possible so I'm keeping a tight arc not doing a whole lot of oscillation and I'm uh, going slow enough to fill in any undercut that might you know that might happen since I'm not low at all um, I'd have to kind of be shaky and, and whatnot to, to get any undercut, so it worked out okay. So I'll put the little cup brush on here and shine it up a little bit so we can take a little peek at it, see how we did. So it's not too horrible, not anything to write home about, but that's the bottom you're looking at right there where all the tie-ins are and where it should be uglier than the rest of it, and it still doesn't look too bad on the bottom. All right, well, here is a quick rundown of the settings used for this joint. Root pass, 110 to 120 amps. Hot pass, 120 amps. Eighth inch gap, feather edge using 1 8 rod, also 3 millimeter for every other country, ER70S2. I use a Miller Dynasty 200DX, 100 to 110 amps with the Technoweld 7018 1 8 rod, dig set to 77. Now, if you like what you saw in this video, I'd like to encourage you to hit the like button, comment, subscribe, and all that. But also, I'd like to invite you to visit the forum at forum.weldingtipsandtricks.com. And while you're there, I'd love for you to register and participate and post. I think you'll find it is an extremely helpful forum. We are not interested at all in pissing contests here. We have a philosophy, be helpful or be gone. So it's a bunch of helpful folks just trying to help help each other get to the next level and help uh, help each other become better welders. So check it out, visit, hang around, learn something, register, post, participate, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Thanks for watching again. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.